It is done by the test called swinging torchlight test. That is because I will keep swinging my torchlight from this side to this side, this side to this side, something like that. Okay. Now, let's uh, assume that this is the right eye, the pathological eye. It is the diseased eye. I'll just write it for your reference and this is the left eye. Okay. Now, when I'm throwing a light on the left eye, see the right eye's pupil is also constricting. That is a normal reaction. Okay. However, when I'm throwing light on my diseased right eye, you see there is a dilatation instead of constriction okay dilatation of the pupil when i throw light on the diseased eye the same occurs in the normal left eye as well are you understanding when i throw light on the normal eye the normal eye constricts and the diseased eye also constricts however when i throw light on the diseased eye the diseased eye dilates so the normal eye will also dilate See again, when I am throwing light on the normal eye, this uh, diseased eye is also constricting. Again, when I throw light on the diseased eye, that is the right eye, the left eye is also dilating. Hmm? Okay, this is Marcus Gunn pupil. Okay, this is seen in optic neuritis as discussed earlier. Okay, now let us look at another interesting condition called the Argyle Robertson pupil. Okay, so what is this? Argyle Robertson pupil, you have to remember three important words whenever you utter this Argyle Robertson pupil. It is bilateral constricted irregular pupil. Okay. Number one bilateral, number two constricted and number three irregular. Okay. So, it is a bilateral constricted irregular pupil that is Argyle Robertson pupil and it is characteristic of neurosyphilis. Okay. Please do not forget this. Argyle Robertson pupil is characteristic of neurosyphilis. Now, what is so special about this Argyle Robertson pupil is that it obeys the light negative accommodation positive rule. Now, this is a little bit complicated. I will try to simplify it for you. What I mean by light negative is that the light reflects. Okay. When I throw the light on the pupil, there is no light reaction. Light reflex is absent. That means there is no constriction of the pupil. Okay, we are clear with this. Now, what do I mean by accommodation positive? We know that in the triple reaction uh, or the accommodation reflex, constriction is one of the components. So, when the patient tries to accommodate, accommodation reflex, the pupil constricts. Okay, constriction is present. That is light negative accommodation positive. Now, look at this patient in primary gaze. He is having the typical Argyle Robertson pupils that is bilateral constricted irregular pupils. However, try to concentrate on this image. I am throwing light and trying to elicit the light response. The pupil is dilated. It is not constricted. However, when I uh, try to elicit the near response in this patient, you can see that the pupil is constricted. That is uh, Argyle Robertson pupil. Now, an easy mnemonic to remember. It is very famous. You might have come across this already. Argyle Robertson pupil ARP stands for accommodation reflex present. And when you go reverse, absent pupillary reflex. Okay. Accommodation reflex present and absent reflex of the pupil. That is about Argyle Robertson pupil. Okay, and it is famously known as the prostitute's pupil. This can sometimes be asked this word. So, try to remember. Now, let us look at Eddie's pupil. What is Eddie's pupil? It is seen in young females who have just recovered from a viral fever. Okay, it is seen typically in young females who have recovered from a viral fever and the characteristic features you can see in this image one pupil dilates and the other remains normal. See, there is a striking difference between the two pupils. The uh, left pupil is dilated whereas the right one is normal. Now, why does this occur? This occurs because the virus attacks the ciliary ganglion of the third cranial nerve. Okay, the third cranial nerve passes through the ciliary ganglion. We know that. So, when this ciliary ganglion 
is attacked this third cranial nerve gets affected and results in edis pupil so what happens if the third cranial nerve is affected the parasympathetic constrictor fibers that are supplied to the pupil are damaged so there is an unopposed action of the sympathetic dilating fibers okay that is the pathogenesis now this one also obeys light negative and accommodation positive rule just like agel robertson pupil okay this might be a little confusing over here when you see that the uh, pupil of the patient is uh, showing this light negative accommodation positive rule how will you differentiate whether it is agel robertson pupil or the edis pupil is by this test called the pilocarpin test okay so we know that such a low dilution 0.125% of pilocarpin does not constrict the normal pupil okay the normal pupil will not constrict with such a dilute solution of pilocarpin however an abnormal pupil will constrict because of a concept called denervation hypersensitivity whenever the nerve is damaged it becomes hypersensitive to even very low stimuli so so the such a weak stimulus as 0.125% of pilocarpin is going to cause constriction in an adis pupil okay now look at this picture this patient is having adis pupil his right eye is the adis pupil and the left eye is normal in dim light and as well as bright light this pupil is not at all constricting you can see that it is dilated also in light response we have seen it is absent right um this uh, light negative and uh, accommodation positive you can see in these two images the in light reflex the pupil is not constricting whereas when you show a near target such as a pen the pupil is constricting this is light negative accommodation positive mechanism so to say that this is ad's pupil uh, after i put 0.125% of pilocarpin see this uh, uh, the pathological pupil has constricted and it indicates a denervation hypersensitivity so this is how you will diagnose ad's pupil okay now a quick a uh, comparison between agel robertson and ad's agel robertson we have seen that it is a constricted pupil whereas ad's if you remember the picture it is a dilated pupil Agel Robertson seen in neurosyphilis it is a bilateral condition and ADs is a unilateral condition Hello everyone this is Dr Sai Suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico app Now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below